The following is a live copyrighted presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for RadioLawTalk.com with your host, Frederick Penny, attorney at law. And now, RadioLawTalk.com. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are tuning in hoping to hear the melodic tones of Fred Penny, the soothing voice of Fred Penny, the voice that says, I know what I'm doing and I am do it pretty well. Well, you, you get me and Denise because Fred's on assignment today. So, uh, Fred, we'll see you when you get back next week. Todd Kuhn and Denise Dirks filling in, trying to fill in admirably for Fred Penny. We just do the best we can. Those are pretty big shoes to fill. Behind the glass, Cal Hunter. Cal, how are you? Well, as you can tell, I've been better, but I've also been worse. Hanging in there, doing well, enjoying a beautiful Northern California morning with where my, for some reason, my allergies took off and I about sneezed half of my left brain out. I've been sneezing all oh, morning. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what's going on out there. It must be the wind. Well, as long as we can still take uh, you know, advantage of the right brain, then we're fine, right? And my power's back on at my radio stations in Red Bluff. That's good news. They oh, were, oh, were, did... We were off for four days. Now, for those of you that don't know, last year, know. a couple of years ago, well, that was wow. last, last year, there were the, the wildfires in California. And it was determined that some of those wildfires, or the, the epicenter with a lot of them, or the big one, was as a result of a downed line by PG&E. Yeah, it was actually two fires that started simultaneously yes. and joined together, both the result of PG&E outdated equipment. Pacific so, Gas and Electric Company. Yes. 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 And so what, one of the things that's happening, is, and we all got notices, those of us who are on the PG&E power grid got notices that... As we are getting into the high usage, high wind section, they are now going to start shutting down power and have shut down power to certain areas in an effort to, if that's an area where they think that lines might be down or they see activity spiking because of weather changes and things like that, they'll shut down the power to that area till the weather subsides and then turn it back on so that if one of their poles gets knocked over, something happens, it doesn't start another fire that goes and wipes out an entire town, as happened with Paradise, California. It's yeah. one of those things. It's not a blackout based on usage, per se. It's a blackout based upon just the fear that a natural disaster could happen. And a legal compromise and a bill signed into law by the latest governor to preside over a bunch of blackouts. That would be Gavin Newsom. It was... Uh, who was the one who was uh, Gray Davis was the last one we got gray outs yes. because of deregulation. And and look so you you were out of power for 4 days. People in Red Bluff, California were out for 4 days. People in surrounding environs sometimes longer, some less. Chico of course, very near to Paradise. I uh, I read a report yesterday tragically in El Dorado County which is over it's close to where we are. There was a the power was shut down, and there was an individual who was on oxygen right. and was unable to get to his emergency tank and died within 15 minutes of the power going out because he could not get to the oxygen that he had. So that stuff is going on. But I do also want to say PG&E, the power company, gave people plenty of notice. I mean, I received notice that this could happen easily a week in advance of it happening. Yeah, ironically, they ran commercials on the radio stations that they knocked off the air. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they were giving them um, um, the ability to contact them via the Internet when people don't have electricity. How are you going to do that? Yeah, yeah I, I I remember seeing that in, in hurricane coverage where they said, you know, if you're watching this in hurricane area, please go to this. It's like, well, if you're. In a hurricane area, your TV's knocked out, so I don't think you're going to be able to get the notice. But, hey, you met your obligations. So, But glad you're here. Glad things are back up and running. But that raises the whole pile of legal questions I was hoping we would discuss sometime, maybe not today, perhaps in a future time. When a judge says, look, this is what I'm telling you. This is one of the things you're going to have to do when you get in a high fire danger time. You're going to do this. What does a judge know about it, honestly? What qualifies them to be an electrical system operator? Because if you saw the damage and harm that was done economically to these little tiny communities, restaurants letting food rot in their in their freezers, you know, uh, gas stations not being able to pump gasolines, convenience stores, no ice, they can't sell ice to people who really need it, you know, they can't run their point of sale systems. I just keep wondering to myself when I look at this, how is this a wise solution? 
when somebody dying because they didn't get their oxygen. Right. Yeah. That's my point. And yeah. Whereas proper system maintenance, proper system design would probably have eliminated all of this. What were you going to say, Todd? I'm sorry. Well, just generally, and I do think this is an important thing that we can talk about in the future, but this raises an interesting aspect of, in my opinion, judicial decisions and when judges say things like this, when the Supreme Court makes a decision in anything. One thing that folks need to remember is that oftentimes, I would probably say most of the time, the judge is not coming up with the solution on their own, on his or her own, just out of thin air, this is the way it should be. Most of the time, the judge is siding with an argument that's been made by one of the two people that are before him so, or her. So he's in a binary environment, yeah, in well, effect. Oh, I'll, 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 well, they can go for precedence and look at stare decisis and, sure. and that stuff. So it's not completely binary, but for the most part. I'll give, you an, I'll give you an example. Do you remember back when Obamacare was challenged to the Supreme Court? And what was it? Justice Roberts determined that it was, what, a penalty, not a tax? Right. Yes. Okay, so Justice Roberts determined that it was a penalty, not a tax. And people were like, where did he come up with that one? And Roberts created this out of thin air mm -hmm. and all that. Well, I, even, even the Obama administration, which I found ironic, was saying he got it wrong. It's not it's, – it's a tax, not a penalty. They, they said he got it wrong. Well, I went back and read the legal briefs, the arguments made by counsel for both sides before the Supreme Court. And the lawyers for the Obama administration in support of Obamacare argued that it was a penalty, not a tax. They argued, and, and Justice Roberts didn't come up with this out of thin air. He read the briefs. He read what they said, did all that, yeah, did his he, legal analysis and said, in, essentially, I agree with you. This is what it is. Yeah, because you can't – the judges don't want to presume something that is not legal or not permissible if they find a legal permissible – reason and a, and a, a very justifiable reason for it they're gonna they're gonna you know favor that side and, and let's think about what they are the name is they are judges they're judging between two arguments that are being presented two positions that are being presented to them and deciding which one they want to go with so with the pg and e thing with this i would i i, I would be i would be willing to bet if I was a betting person, money, that if you were in the chambers and read the briefs and argument that one side argued, judge, this is what should be done and put forth the whatever reasoning from experts and all that to say, this is what should be done. And the judge said, OK, I'm going to order that. If, yeah. In fact, I think they were ordered to come up with a plan. So yes. maybe Pacific Gas Electric's own plan that they're following. Yes. But, you know, I. I remember this. Again, you raise a great point. There's there's a judge in the jurisdiction that I practice in, and specifically with regard to DUIs, will lecture defendants and personally love it when this happens, because drinking and driving is very dangerous. It's like Russian roulette. You can get home okay, but or you can get an accident and kill somebody. One of the dumbest things on, yeah. on the planet that mankind yes. can do. Right. And and <laughs> people reach an agreement, and you want to do this, and the lawyers fight back and forth, and every once in a while, this judge will stop and look at the defendant, and look at the defense attorney and the prosecutor, and say, "This is all well and good, but." Sir, what, what, what happens if you go and drink and then get behind the wheel and kill some five-year-old kid? Nobody's going to come back and say, what did the defense attorney do? Or what did, the, what did the prosecutor? They're going to come back and say, what did the judge do? That's why I have to determine this. So don't put me in a position where I have to make a decision that's not based on solid evidence. We'll be back with Case or No Case. We're looking forward to that, Cal. And Thank if you, you want to call in, call in at 855-529-7234. That's 855-LAW-RADIO. Or tweet us at Radio Law Talk, or even email us at info at radiolawtalk.com. If you stay right there, Radio Law Talk will continue right after this. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. I am Cameron Levitt. 
Chief Operating Officer of Concussion Medical Clinic. California's first concussion medical clinic is now open. As concussions increase each year, there has never been a greater need for concussion specialists. Our physicians at Concussion Medical Clinic are board certified in pediatric neurology and sports medicine and have partnered with universities, hospitals, and rehab clinics to expedite the recovery process. Simply put, we are elevating the standard of care. When you need an expert concussion opinion or concussion care, visit concussionmedicalclinic.com to schedule your appointment. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. Hi, I'm Frederick Penny of Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. I bet you're tired of hearing lawyer commercials. So just relax and listen to music for a few seconds. When you or a family member has been injured, call 800-616-4LAW or see us at pennyandassociates.com. See, that wasn't so bad. I'm going a quick quack car wash. Get my car washed, make it quick quack, pretty shiny, sexy, just because I wanna don't drive dirty. Gonna get my car suds at the quick quack car wash. It's the quick quack, quickest and the cleanest by far. We're talking three skinny minutes, sitting right in your car wash, a hundred feet of cloth, washing your car at the quick quack car wash. Any Honda, Mazda, Ford, or Chevy, Sauber, Cadillac, quick quack, don't spruce her up, just like that. You'll be happy looking snappy, you'll be glad you was at the quick quack car wash. Get on the web and go to don'tdrivedirty.com and see where you got your closest quick quack in the local area. Get in your car, get in your truck, get on the road, come visit the dock. Quick quack car wash, where your car will always leave happy, guaranteed. They take pride in being clean and green by conserving and recycling the water they use only at the Quick Quack Car Wash. I knew I had a problem, but I didn't know what to do about it. I tried counting calories, I took pills, eating and eating, and then more eating. I really wanted to stop, but nothing could make me stop. At one point, it was so bad that I just felt like giving up. I felt so alone like nobody else could possibly understand we understand we're overeaters anonymous and we have helped thousands of people just like you people who want to stop their compulsive eating and start living a healthy rewarding life overeaters anonymous help me get my life back now i eat in a way that's healthy and good for me i never realized what i was missing out on with oa i am living again and loving it. Start living the life you deserve with help from Overeaters Anonymous. Find us on the web at oa.org. If you pay my fee, I'll take your case. You're listening to Radio Law Talk. And now back to the show. Just something magical about the way they say that, isn't it? <laughs> it, it? It is. It is. If you pay my fee, I'll, and I suppose I need to say this, you know, because early on in Radio Law Talk, we've been doing this for over two years. You know that? Yes, yeah, start a third. Yeah, going going on two and a half years here, and and I remember making the state in jest. Two statements, if you pay my fee, I'll take your case. And the other one, I'll litigate to your last nickel. Folks, those were said in jest. Show me the money. Yes, I, uh, it, it, that's, quite frankly, I, I find that as an attorney, things go, it goes a lot better for me if 
I don't charge for legal work that I don't honestly believe that I did. And, and by that, I mean, I could charge somebody a flat fee for a DUI, right? You know, it's 2,500 bucks, I'll hand you your DUI. And we show up to the arraignment and the DA says, well, here's the offer I'm going to make. And I know that there's not a whole lot I can do there. Yeah, if my client goes ahead and wants to plead to that and I recommend that, I'm not going to charge them the full 2500 bucks. I mean, I just, I just don't feel comfortable with that personally. And so I'm not like that. It's not the, if you, you know, just want to make sure people know I'm not as... You know, All right, let's whatever, get on. Let's whatever. move on. I want to. I want to hear. Feel case like, or no case. I feel case. like I'm doing my mea culpas and confessions here. I, I think Denise wants the chance to get some points back here. <laughs> yes. Now here it's go. time to play case or no case. Yay! I want to make it very clear. Many times, case or no case is simply has no relationship to, to any person or its incident, living or dead, actual or fake. They may be made up. They may be real. They may not. That's the whole point here. And so now I take you to New Jersey where it is said that, hey, homicides are common. It happens. You know, bullets fly to hit people, right? Can I get extra points if I do my answer with a Jay-Z accent? Uh, only if it's a really good one. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay. So one night, Al Bigfoot Mulrooney and his pal Pauline Crab Cakes Bruno Brunderson had a job to do. So they went to a guy whom their associate said needed to be rubbed out, and they did their nasty work. They donned their bulletproof vests, and went to Frankie Vestucchio's house and rubbed him out. Vestucchi or Vesti's wife, Dolores, saw the whole thing and called the cops, identifying the killers, even the car they were driving. She also told the police she could identify them because they were wearing bulletproof vests. And the police said, you know, okay, we're going, when we get these guys, we're going to put in a special enhancement on the homicide charges. And so Todd Cunin, since Denise had the privilege of going first last time. Let me tell you, this is a double points, case or no case. And so I ask you, case or no case, and what's the outcome? What's the little rub here that I'm not telling you about? So, well, let me get this straight here. Yeah, big, yeah, big, yeah, Bigfoot yeah. and crab cakes are going to go take out uh, Frankie V. Yeah. They get there, they go ahead, they take him, and Frankie V's misses, you know. Who, she's seen the whole thing, Todd, she, the whole thing. She's seen the whole thing. And these guys, they're wearing the bulletproof vests, yeah. right? Yeah. And as a result, in addition to whatever crime, whatever punishment they get for the crime, there's also an enhancement for wearing the uh, the flak jacket, if you will, right? That That's what you're saying. Hmm. That's certainly possible. Oh, 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 so the question is, is there an enhancement for the flak jacket? Uh, okay. What would okay. the enhancement be? I, I guess have, that's the question. I have yeah. no idea. I don't know. Wearing clothes out of season, you know, uh, wearing, <laughs> wearing, wearing, season. wearing white after Labor Day, uh, you know, whatever. Um, wearing, wearing a Speedo to a family reunion, I, you know. Okay. That's bad. So uh, a bulletproof Speedo nonetheless. My family will never forget when I did that anyway. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, yes, especially because you wore it backwards. It was really unpleasant, Cal. All right, whatever. Uh, okay, so that that's probably enough of that. Um, so I'm not aware of an enhancement for wearing a bulletproof vest. I'm aware of enhancements if you use an assault weapon in the case of a crime. I'm aware of enhancements if you use a weapon in the brandishing a weapon during the commission of a crime. Certainly this is a commission of a crime, you know, taking somebody and murder and, and whatnot. Um, and, and then there's the question about... How did she know they were wearing bulletproof vests if they had clothes on under, you know, whatever. So I'm going to say that this is an actual scenario. I think the missus actually said all of this, uh, but I do not believe that they could get any enhancement for the vests. I okay, guess, I guess that's uh, that's the answer to your question there, Mr. Hunter. Miss Dirks, what say you, madam? No case. Oh, no brother. case. Hmm. And she's answering in two words now. Great. Yeah. What did, I, did I take you off? <laughs> no, I just uh, um, the names are too funny. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, in New Jersey, when was this kind of happening? It wasn't happening. If it was Chicago, it might be more believable. You didn't see Jay Z show with Mike the Situation, whatever his name was, and the abs, and you know. I Snooki tried to avoid that and, like uh, the plague. Yeah. <laughs> good, good call, Denise. I saw 15 seconds of it, and I thought, Oh Lord, there's 15 seconds. I'll never get back. Please forgive me for wasting my life. Seriously, I, I really, I really feel like I dodged a bullet there for this reason. Um, you had your 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 um, special enhancement on. Yeah. 
Oh, brother, you know, Denise, you say those things, and it's like a softball, and I'm going, do I hit it? Oh, that's so do easy. I, do I, do I, that was so easy. You know, the coach has given me the take sign, and I'm like, ah, i got to lay down a bunt here, but I want to hit that ball. Um, okay, and the reason I say that is when I was, uh, when I was younger. I didn't even know. There was Never mind. Go ahead. When, when, I, when, I, was, uh, when, I, was, when I was just a little tyke, my family actually moved to New Jersey. We lived in Haddonfield, New Jersey, just really? across, across the river from Philadelphia. Huh, and we lived there until I was about five or six years old. And then uh, change of employment, we came back. Are you, to, like, just trying to get rid of time uh, here? Came, came back to the West Coast. <laughs> but, you know, I'm sitting there going, if things had worked out for Dad, I, the thing, my life could have been completely different. I would have been, you know, toddy Q shoes or whatever. But uh, Toddy uh, two shoes with yeah. the silk suits. Yeah, I tell you what, you know, I could, I could make you deal on a Rolex watch. It's not Rolex. It's Rolex. All right. Just want to make sure you, it's not the real it thing, but it looks like a truck. That. What do you want me to do about yeah, it? Yeah. Hey, it stops, but it's correct at least twice a day. Come on. It's more <laughs> accurate than any other watch. <laughs> Cal, you going to tell us what this uh, case or no case is when we come back from break? Of course. I, I want to wait until then just to heighten the suspense. <laughs> <laughs> And Denise wants to. I want to hear all about the special enhancement. But yeah. anyway. <laughs> Why, thank you. I want the bulletproof <laughs> Speedo. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. There's lots more radio. Todd is biting his tongue is so hard it's almost falling out of his mouth. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll come right back. Thanks for turning us on here on Radio Law Talk on your favorite radio station. And, of course, at RadioLawTalk.com. Stay tuned. The program continues just in a minute. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they're able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy. And I'm happy too. Thanks, Tax Doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. That's 800-263-2610. Warning, don't let your business get left behind in what is likely to be the biggest economic boom in recent history. If you need to build for your business to grow, call General Steel today for a pre-engineered steel building designed for your needs. No wasted space. Steel prices are expected to rise, but you can still lock in your price on a General Steel building. And you can still save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. As much as half. But you must call now. If you need a church building, office, warehouse, manufacturing space, retail space, or more. Call General Steel today. You can still get the General's 50-year structural warranty and General Steel quality, all at a price you can afford. So don't let rising steel prices put your project out of reach and stop you from making your company great. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. That's 800-617-9312. Know someone with a drinking or drug problem? Learn how to get sober after we share these stories. I was 35 with two beautiful children when my life and addiction started to spiral out of control. After my divorce, I went into a depression cycle and started drinking more often and using prescription drugs. After my second DWI and arrest, my ex-husband threatened to take our children away from me. I was 17 when I became addicted to heroin and meth. I thought I could quit on my own, but I couldn't. It hit me when I was arrested. Get sober now. Your private insurance may cover costs and we'll get you here. It's simple. Just call Elite Rehab Placement right now. Please don't wait. Your life matters to us. 
That's 800-918-1376. Even in the hustle and noise of this modern world, we feel the pull of the forest to walk under the canopy and feel transformed. National forests are essential to life, majestic and grand. They clean our air, supply drinking water to millions, and provide homes to countless wildlife. They fuel our imaginations, inspiring us to think big, and now's the time to do just that. Fires and natural disasters devastate our forests each year. That's why we're replanting millions of new trees across the country. The Arbor Day Foundation needs your help. We've heard the call of the wild and we've answered. Scientists, foresters, volunteers, and members, together we can preserve and protect our heritage and legacy. We must act now so that the generations of today and tomorrow can continue to depend on our forests. Visit arborday.org. See how you can help. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. Smile. Smile, buddy. Come on. Smile. Oh, honey. He's still not smiling. Maybe he's not a smiler. (sighs) Yeah, maybe he's just not a happy baby. Maybe he's just being a boy. You know how boys are. Or maybe he's teething. Oh, poor baby. I think his gums hurt. Maybe he's just tired. Or maybe his tummy hurts. He didn't eat that much. Maybe he's not ticklish. You think maybe he's scared of the dog? Maybe he'll outgrow it. Maybe it's a phase. Maybe he just doesn't like smiling. Maybe he has autism. And we can definitely do something to help. Maybe is all you need to find out more about autism. No big, joyful smiles by six months is one early sign. Learn the others at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs or see a doctor today for an autism screening. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. And it can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. I like the Amadrosa Valley. Radio Law Talk. Now back to the show. So I, I got to tell you, Cal, I, I just got a message here from one of our listeners. Oh, no. It says, uh, I'm an I, OEA, sorry. Yeah, I'm a, it says, I'm enjoying the Radio Law Talk comedy hour. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> thank Uh-oh. you. Thank, yeah, we, we do talk law eventually. but We do? Yeah, yeah, well, well I tried to talk the law. Yeah. I have to fight with my partner here. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> see. I'll see what you know. I'm moldable. Okay, so. Well, here's my view. It's only radio. If we okay. can't have fun, what are we doing here? A little bit of fun. Yeah, All well. right. So the question is, was about there was about this homicide that took place in New Jersey, where Al Bigfoot Mulrooney and his pal Polly Crab Cakes Bruno Brunderson had a job to do. They went out to a guy whom their associates said needed to be rubbed out, and they did their nasty work. They put on their bulletproof vests and went to Frankie Vestuccio's house and rubbed out Frankie V. Vesti's wife, Dolores, saw the whole thing, called the cops, identifying the killers, the car they were driving. She said, you'll find them. They have bulletproof vests on. I asked if there was a case or no case, and Todd said... Well, it, it, you know, uh, okay, I'm not going to try to change my thing here. Okay, nothing, critical but score I, here. You have 28 points. Denise has 39. Fred Penny has 47. I said it was a case, but there's no enhancement. It just occurred to me that Vestuccio bulletproof vest. Oh, now, you're, oh, now you're getting it. <laughs> now, now it's you know, that's it's called a way homer. You don't get it till you're on your way home. Okay. Denise and you said. I said it was no case. Yeah, Denise, well, just flat what? out. There was no case because killing is uh, yeah. So those of you who say it is a case, that was Todd. So sorry, Todd. Yeah. Okay, well, that seems appropriate in light well, of the you know, scenario, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, in New Jersey, as if the killing wasn't bad enough, in New Jersey, it is against the law. There is a special enhancement for murdering someone while wearing a bulletproof vest. There's a special enhancement. I kind of like that, actually. Yeah, me too. I don't know why. All right, so I, does that mean I get plus four because it was double? It was double. You get four points, and and uh, t- 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 Todd didn't get any here. Uh, I bet I know why there's an enhancement for why? wearing for, for, for murder while what, wearing a what, bulletproof vest. I don't understand vest. it, but why? What okay, that? so... What are the scenarios in which somebody would wear a bulletproof vest to commit a crime that is involving murder? Usually it's in a situation where, historically we've seen this, they go in, they want to do some mass thing, and they want to protect themselves against 
uh, police intervention, taking them out by mm -hmm. sniper true, or whatever, true, true. so that they the can case. continue to commit the crime and do stuff. Uh, I can't imagine wearing a bulletproof vest to go and you know rub out some small, uh, small time whatever. So when you wear a bulletproof vest, it's because you in all likelihood are intending to commit a crime on a larger scale. So a precursor to yes. mayhem, you would say. So, yes, so that, that, that makes sense for having the law. Okay. In all my right. opinion. Good explanation. But it was an interesting scenario, though, don't you think? It, yeah. It, it was very interesting. I appreciate the uh, ability to lose more I like points. when the cops come up and say, okay, I'm going to pull you over. What for? Well, uh, you're wearing a bulletproof vest. Yeah, so, well, you killed somebody, too. Oh. Oh. Oh, well. Oh, that. Oh. <laughs> and now back, nothing funny about homicide, of course. And now back to Radio Law Talk, the show. Good job, you guys. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Well, I guess sticking with the East Coast theme, uh, two Rudy, Rudy, Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani associates linked to Ukrainian investigations have been indicted on campaign finance charges and were actually arrested at the airport upon returning from Ukraine? Was that No, right? they were here. They were, were, here, were here, and they had a one-way flight back to Ukraine. Okay. So, yeah, I so they had they just were... been, they had just had like a bunch of fun. They'd been out to dinner. They'd been to the White House a month before. They they kind of like did a lot of... Um, had their tourist visas, probably. Uh, yes. They're both citizens. So, U.S. citizens? Yes. They're both U.S. citizens. Wow. What? That's why having one-way flights to Ukraine is really an important factor. Red flag. Yep. Yes, they, they were arrested Wednesday. No pun at... intended. Red flag. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. No, uh, no, I, I actually, don't get it. I'm going to say pun well, intended. red, you know, Russian communist red flag. Well, never Ukra mind. Whatever. Okay, never mind. all right. So, yes, they were arrested at Dulles <laughs> International Airport in Virginia. And what's what's going on here? What What is... What are they accused of doing? It's Parnas and Furman, uh, Fruman. Yeah, Fruman. Fruman, and that's kind of an issue because one of the allegations is that he got around some of the finance forms because of a misspelling of his name. One was Fruman, and the other one was Furman. So that was, I remember reading one of those allegations there. But what, what happened? What's going on, Denise? Well, this has already come out of the yeah. grand jury. Yes. So there's an indictment out of the grand jury, and this involves vi violating the Federal Election Commission laws. So we have what's called the Election Act, and the Election Act precludes foreign if um, foreign money is being contributed to any kind of federal campaign in the United States, uh, there cannot be monies contributed under false names. Uh, there cannot be uh, excess of monies contributed. So there's a cap on what can be contributed. So what these two individuals did is they actually, and, and it's called the um, Federal Election Campaign Act of 1971 as amended. And, and, and just to make sure we understand, so... No foreign money can come in, and of domestic money, there's a cap on what you can donate, right? Yes. That's, so that's basically what this is. And it, recently in the law, you've also heard about other things that you also can't accept any favors or things in kind that would help from foreign nationals. But this case here involves primarily just money, right? Um, primarily. Pri the no, not necessarily. There's kind of a twist to it, too. Yeah. It involves also trying to develop a business. So it's not just about finance money, but it's also about getting monies and even diverting some of that money, yeah. which is kind of an interesting thing. But what, what they did was they created um, their own little entity. Uh, they had a corporation, and that entity was collecting money from foreign nationals, from people in the United States, um, and they were giving that money to different campaigns, including one congressman, and they ga also gave it to a super PAC. Uh, $325,000 went to a super PAC, to pro-Trump super PAC, American First Action. Um, and that exceeded that exceeded both the quantity that they could contribute, and it also it, um, was improper because it was like using their company as a straw man. Right, if and you in will. all fairness, I believe a similar thing happened under the Obama administration with a Chinese bundler who would go out and bundle up these big things and run them through private local companies, and then made the donations to to PACs and, and races that they favored. Right, absolutely. And yeah. then these different entities that received it, you know, some of them are claiming now they're going to segregate it. They have it segregated out. They're not going to 
don't don't really know what they're going to do with it. Some have said they're going to give it to um, some kind of charity, but they can't do anything with it right now until this investigation is over. Right. And this investigation is big. This is not a small little investigation because you've got two foreign-born now citizens of the United States involving themselves with some Russian and they just name it as Russia number one, and they they haven't like named names yet, but they're getting really close to it. And certainly, uh, with the regard to the one congressman, they did name the congressman's name. Um, what is his name? <laughs> well, I, I'm forgetting his name for some reason. Well, the the interesting thing you talk about that David but, Carre- Carrera, right? But, but let's let's make sure in the indictment, the indictment does not mention the names. The indictment doesn't mention the name of the super PAC, the, the articles that we have, because here's the thing. The indictment doesn't mention that. But then when you go to the FEC website and talk about contributions, so example, for example, in the indictment, it says that GEP, the name of their company, donated $325,000 to committee number one. Well, then somebody has to take the next step to go to the FEC website and find out, okay, who did GEP donate $325,000 to? Oh, it was America First, or whatever that one was. The same thing is true with getting the identity of the congressman. So the articles have gone and done the legwork to find out who that is, but the folks aren't necessarily named in the indictment. So we, we can identify them, but not because of what the indictment says. I think the thing that's interesting, if you've heard in the news recently this hubbub about the removal of the Ukrainian ambassador from the United States, right, that was removed recently, This indictment alleges that the influence from Ukrainians to these individuals to fund the PACs, to get the money to support the congressman. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. I guess she'll die. It sounds like all that. When you follow all that, it was in small part, there are no small part. Because they wanted the ambassador removed from Ukraine. And so that's right. So the congressman appears to have played a part in that maybe, but that's what's happening. The interesting thing from my standpoint is these two individuals are associates of Rudy Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani. We have heard recently the uh, allegations that Giuliani, Barr, and Trump have been working in concert to dig up dirt on Joe Biden and what have you. The articles say that Barr knew about and knew that these folks were going to be arrested. We'll pick that up and talk about why that is significant. We come back from the break, but is there a chink in the armor of that trifecta? Who knows? Oh, I think there is. There's going to be a connection. Yeah. And they came out today saying that Juliana is part of the investigation. That was the news this morning. So stay with us. Tweet us at Radio Law Talk. Call us at 855-LAW-RADIO. We want to hear from you. The trails of political intrigue take many a twist. We'll discuss it further when we come back here on Radio Law Talk. Don't go away. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Not all law firms have extensive experience in all areas of the law. It's wise to look for firms that have knowledge and understanding in your particular area of concern. So go to prolawfirms.com. They have listings of attorneys in key areas of practice, such as family law, estate planning, personal injury, bankruptcy, and so forth. When you're looking for a lawyer that has extensive experience in your particular area of need, go to prolawfirms.com. That's prolawfirms.com. ProLawFirms.com is not a law firm and does not endorse or recommend any specific law firm. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to PennyLawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. If you're one of those independent people who wants your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. 
Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In, ready to grow with you. I am Cameron Levitt, Chief Operating Officer of Concussion Medical Clinic. California's first concussion medical clinic is now open. As concussions increase each year, there has never been a greater need for concussion specialists. Our physicians at Concussion Medical Clinic are board certified in pediatric neurology and sports medicine and have partnered with universities, hospitals, and rehab clinics to expedite the recovery process. Simply put, we are elevating the standard of care. When you need an expert concussion opinion or concussion care, visit concussionmedicalclinic.com to schedule your appointment. Fancy pants peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even bought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Many women have so many clothes in the closet, but then we go to get dressed and find we have nothing to wear. Ah! We've all been there. We all want to be comfortable and fashionable at the same time, and it's difficult to find clothing that makes that task effortless. But at Letty & Company, you can find trendy, comfortable clothing that is affordable, things you'll want to wear every day. Shop with a purpose, online, with free shipping. Just go to lettyandcompany.com. LettyandCompany.com. I knew I had a problem, but I didn't know what to do about it. I tried counting calories, I took pills, eating and eating, and then more eating. I really wanted to stop, but nothing could make me stop. At one point, it was so bad that I just felt like giving up. I felt so alone. Like nobody else could possibly understand. We understand. We're Overeaters Anonymous, and we have helped thousands of people just like you. People who want to stop their compulsive eating and start living a healthy, rewarding life. Overeaters Anonymous, help me get my life back. Now I eat in a way that's healthy and good for me. I never realized what I was missing out on. With OA, I am living again and loving it. Start living the life you deserve with help from Overeaters Anonymous. Find us on the web at OA.org. Todd has a kitty. Is this real life? Time to get back to Radio Law Talk on RadioLawTalk.com and on your favorite radio station. Yeah, yeah I got a cat. What, what are you going to make of it? You know? <laughs> Uh, Denise, With a bulletproof vest. Yeah, she, yeah, well, you know, she better have one. Uh, so Rudy Giuliani made a statement after these, after his associates were arrested, made a statement where he was a little surprised that the arrest had taken place, given that there was another matter that had yet to resolve that he said was essentially a civil matter. And at the break, we were talking about how this criminal case is tracking kind of tracking closely to a, what's going on there. What is this civil thing that's going on? Well, I'm not sure what civil matter he's referring to, but there is some money that has been um, uh, taken out and uh, how do I say that? A Russian national, yeah, well, a Russian national provided money um, and it, that money was then um, used to obtain influence with political candidates regarding policies to benefit a recreational marijuana business venture and to help obtain retail marijuana licenses. So the allegations in this suit look like that could be where the civil connections involved because it looks like a Russian national is trying to get in, trying to, to – somehow produce marijuana and do it in a legal way, obtain licensing and all of that. And in order to do so, he's got to uh, gain influence with candidates, with political candidates and with actual, you know, members of Congress and and members of of state legislatures perhaps as well. So, yeah, but there was this – when I say civil matter, I guess anything not criminal, in my opinion, would be a civil matter. So. 
Giuliani actually represents these two people. In that case, it was some, a, a civil matter, a non-criminal matter, still under the purview of the FEC, the Federal Elections Commission. And he represents them. That has yet to be resolved. That's why he said he was a little shocked that the arrest was made, because he viewed this as largely just a civil matter. But it'll be interesting to see where this goes going forward. One thing that I think that we have seen recently, because in the past, and even Cal brought this up, there were some things that happened under the Obama administration with China and with stuff. We are seeing the Department of Justice really crack down on the influence of foreign nationals in anything related to the United States. There's been an increase. I mean, look, the foreign national, the failure to register as a foreign national was a crime that had been, what, prosecuted three times in its 60-year history prior to this year, and now there are people serving jail time for it. We have this system here that's going on, and and quite frankly, I, I don't think personally speaking, that the actions of any party as of today are something that they thought, hey, here's something we can do that's never been done before. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. I think that people have been following a practice that has gone on for decades. And I happen to believe that there is a belief that, okay, yeah, it's time for that practice to stop. It's time for that to end. And it ends when people end up getting prosecuted for it. That's well, here we have, on. you know, Mueller was part of the <laughs> Justice Department, and he had a lot of indictments that came out against Russians for the interference in the 2016 elections. Um, but since Mueller left, there haven't been a whole lot of indictments through the Justice Department. Justice Department may be made aware of indictments that are coming down, but they're actually coming down in the state courts and not with state fed, this is a state federal court, right? Yeah. It's... No, this this is United States District Court, Southern District in New York. This is a federal. Oh, this is a federal court. Yeah, I mean, states... but that's but that's not necessarily the uh, Justice Department. Well, it's the U.S. Attorney's Office. There you go. And so it all under that umbrella. Look, even Mueller, when he came across something, if it was in a local jurisdiction, would refer it to that local Correct. jurisdiction to handle. And yes. let's also understand Mueller's only been it's only been, what, four months since he five months since he gave his report and stepped down. When when was it? Uh, March? I think he last talked to. Yeah, I think it was just in July when he last talked to Congress, though. Yeah. And, and but his investigation stopped in March. That's when yeah. he submitted his report. So we got April, May, June, July, August, September. So six months since he's been out. Uh, you know, they've got a lot of work there. I It'll be interesting to see where individual U.S. attorneys go forward and what sort of precedent this sets for the investigation going forward. You know, we talked about how this might have a tie with the college admissions scandal, right? And, And I think one tie is there are people, when it comes to college admissions, who had money that generally speaking, felt like if I had money, I could make a donation, I could grease the kids, do something to help my kid get into that school. Maybe not everybody went so far as paying off proctors to change test scores, but look, if I donate 100000 bucks for the uh, building of your new wing here, can my kid go to your school? Can that happen? And stuff like that. And likewise, there are these political issues that happen with people talking with foreigners and then coming here and then doing all of this. Well, the game has changed. And I think people may be waiting to see where the dust settles. College admissions parents. Okay, what can I donate to help get my kid into school? Or is everything completely off limits? And, you know, with that, the dust has to settle to figure out what am I going to be prosecuted? What am I not going to be prosecuted for? And I think the same thing is true here with this political activity, foreign versus domestic and money. And, okay, where is the dust going to settle that allows me to know what I can and cannot do? In other words, how can I either A, game the system, or B, accomplish what I want to accomplish by using Legally. my, my <laughs> influence? Yeah, right? th- there's those that want to figure out how to game the system. Right. But I think there are also those who say, well, how do I engage in, where, where's the line for what is legal and what is not legal now? And so I think it's just sort of... I, I had raised this point. We talk during the week, Denise. Uh, we text back and forth and email about stories that we're going to do, and I had raised this point. I would be curious to see if anybody is tracking for this college admissions. Uh, the total nationally 
if you if you were able to take all of the charitable contributions to all institutions from all individuals nationally and just say, okay, it, the number is X, if there is, say, in the next year or so, a reduction in the amount of those contributions based upon what we've seen here, because people either A, don't want to contribute, or B, are fearful that if they do, they'll be prosecuted. If there was any sort of in-kind exchange on admissions for do, those donors. Do you suppose universities are now thinking, how can we retrench our strategies to attract big money donors so we can name the cafeteria after them so we can let their kids sneak in? I mean, do you suppose that they're kind of rethinking all of that? Uh, yeah, I, I would imagine so. I would imagine that. We're not going to get into the story, but that, and especially in California with uh, ed universities having to deal now with a new California law that says that student athletes can be paid commercially for their likeness and for that, which is a clear violation of NCAA rules, but California law says, yeah, go for it. That's going to re-arc the cards for recruiting. I would dare so say. So what do you think that this political campaign um, uh, indictments, what do you what do you think is going to come of this? Because to me, it looks like it's going to be like a sprawling web, number one, that there's going to be a lot of people trapped and brought up in this. And some of these people that are players in this, that are outside of this exact indictment, but have some influence as to it, some of them have, um, you know, it's been suggested that, that they've done some impropriety and they also testified against Manafort. So there's there's a, this is a big thing. And Manafort was doing the same thing, only he was trying to to influence Ukrainian elections. He wasn't necessarily coming to the United States to influence United States elections, but he was taking money to uh, and receiving money and getting paid to help influence the Ukrainian ref, um, in, uh, elections, which is legal in Ukraine, by the way. Do it's you, not illegal like it is in the United States. Do you want my conspiracy theory response? Sure. <laughs> which is always more entertaining. Uh, up until this week, everybody seemed to be in the climate in the media seemed to be that Trump, Barr and Giuliani were the unified three headed monster going after Biden and doing all of this stuff. And maybe this is a red herring to make it look like there's a chink in that armor, the trifecta, because Barr basically signed off or agreed to let these two guys be. Well, they're the fall guys. They're the fall guys. They're the fall guys to keep up the appearance that maybe Giuliani and Barr aren't in cahoots to help Trump. No, I think Giuliani is going to take the downside. That's my theory. Could be. I think he's going down, um, and he'll take the fall for Trump. Or is it a political operation is the question you're asking, right? You know, you know at this point, you can't rule you can't anything, rule out. anything I mean, out. Truth I is stranger than fiction. We're at the end of our second hour. Hey, stay with us. We have a third hour, and we're going to have a lot more fun. We've got a lot more topics for you. And for your wrong number caller, no, Denise is not here. Well, not that Denise, another person named Denise. We'll, we'll take our last break of this hour. We'll continue with the program. Don't go away. You have been listening to RadioLawTalk.com, a copyrighted presentation of Radio Law Talk Incorporated.